so now we're going to be talking about gases. Okay? Um, so gases, in terms of chemistry, we need to start off by defining what an ideal gas is. So ideal gas, we need to know two properties, and it's with volume um, and intramolecular forces. All right. So the volume, and this is volume uh, within um, the actual molecule itself. So within um, a, a water vapor molecule, that volume is going to be negligible. So it's going to be zero. All right. um, intramolecular forces are also going to be zero. Right? And that are forces between two different uh, water molecules. All right. Um, so now that we know what ideal gases are, we can go on to the actual laws of ideal gases, and that would be the ideal gas law. So the ideal gas law um, says that PV equals nRT. Right, so this is something that we probably remember, um, but it's pretty much just saying uh, pressure, volume, um, so you multiply those together and this is the number of moles, uh, R is the gas constant, and T is temperature. And the only thing that we have to know is that temperature um, is always in kelvins. Right? And I, I mentioned this before, but if you ever are unsure uh, what the temperature is in Celsius or Kelvins, um, you can pretty much always be, be sure that it's going to be in Kelvins. Right? Um, so if, you, if you're not sure, just, just guess Kelvins and you'll probably be right. right? So this just relates to two um, pretty basic stuff. But another one we're going to be working with is P1V1 um, over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. All right? So what this is saying is that Pressure is inversely proportional to volume, and likewise, volume is inversely proportional to uh, pressure. But pressure is proportional to temperature, and volume is proportional to temperature. All right. So what does that mean? So if I increase pressure, I'm going to decrease volume. If I increase pressure, I'm going to increase temperature. Increase volume, increase temperature. All right. So um, there's a lot of different rules within here or different laws that they derive this equation don't worry about them just know this basic one and you can pretty much apply to any question but pretty much what they'll be asking is that um, you know they'll have uh, some type of problem where they'll say you know this is an ideal gas um, it follows the ideal gas laws we are going to increase the pressure by a certain amount and keep the temperature constant what will happen to volume all right so we know that the volume will decrease by that same amount that we increase uh, pressure by all right, so the next thing that we're going to be talking about um, is partial pressure. Okay, so partial pressure, or the partial pressure law, otherwise known as Dalton's law, um, says that the, the individual pressures of each molecule is going to, if we sum those up, it's going to equal the total pressure. Okay, so pretty simple. Um, if we know that all the individual pressures, we can sum them all up and we'll get the total. Okay, so a basic example would be, we have a container, and it, it contains 8 moles of A, 18 moles of B, and the total pressure of that system um, is 52 ATMs. Um, what is the partial pressure of A? Right? So pretty much it's just a uh, proportion. So we know that if we have a box like this, uh, we're going to have 8 of A and we're going to have 18 of B. Right? Um, and this total pressure is 52. Right? That's the total pressure. Right? So we know that if we want to find um, the partial pressure of A, right, what's that going to mean? It's going to mean it's just the proportion of A all right, so that is 8 over the total amount, which is 26, and we're going to multiply that by 52. All right, and that will show us that the partial pressure of A is going to be 16. All right, and if we likewise, we can do the same thing with the other one 18 over 8 plus 18 times 52. All right, um, so that's going to show us that this has a, a partial pressure of 36. And if you add those together, that will get 52 ATM, and that's what Dalton's law says. Okay, right. so the next thing we're going to be talking about is the law of effusion, or Graham's law of effusion. Okay? Um, so effusion means exit, and so we're going to be dealing with gases. So it's the speed um, that, we, that a gas particle exits uh, a certain location. And this is always going to deal with pinholes. Okay? So you're going to have this um, container, and they're going to say, um, now I poke a hole a small pinhole um, within the container, um, and these will exit the, the, the container. Okay? And you have, to define, you have to figure out what the speed um, of A and what the speed of B is uh, proportionally. Okay? So this is the equation right here, the speed of A over speed of B, um, these are two different molecules, um, is equal to the square root of the molar mass, that's what this mm, of B over mm of A. So what does this show us? This shows us that the molar mass is inversely proportional to the speed. Right? So um, that would be if we increase the weight of something or increase the, the molar mass, uh, this will 
in turn decrease the speed. So slower, bigger objects move slower. Um, and I guess that is intuitive in, in other cases. But how do we, how, if we can't remember this equation, how did we get there? Uh, well, what this is saying is that the kinetic energy um, of both the systems or both of the molecules are equal. Right? And remember, kinetic energy um, is defined in this way. Right? So the one half mv squared, they're both equal to each other. And if we do a little bit of manipulation, um, we'll see the following. Okay. Um, so what we found is the same thing that we found in the equation. We know that the speeds um, are inver inversely proportional to the actual uh, molar mass. Right? So if you can't remember, you can always go back to this. You can always go back to the kinetic energies being equal to each other. 